Hello and welcome to the second lesson in my Android Development Fundamentals series. In this lesson, our first project, we're essentially going to jump into Eclipse and just make our first project from scratch. We're going to focus primarily on how to make the project, but we're also going to touch on some of the files that Eclipse generates for us as well. So more specifically, we're first going to discuss the process of creating a new emulator in Eclipse so that we can eventually test our application. Then we're going to talk about creating a new project from scratch in Eclipse and all the screens you're going to see as you go through that process. And as I said, we're going to touch on some of the files that Eclipse generates for us, one of them being the Android manifest. So we're going to dive into the manifest a little so we can understand some of the technical details behind what's happening there. So let's get started by creating a new emulator in Eclipse. It's not something we do often, but it's something that is important enough to go over now. So the first place we're going to go is the Eclipse toolbar up here. And after you've installed the Android SDK, you'll see that there's two Android looking buttons up here. The one on the left is the SDK Manager, and the one on the right is the AVD or Android Virtual Device Manager. And that's the one we're going to use to create a new emulator. So click that. You'll see I've created two devices here, two emulators, but we're going to go ahead and create a new one. We're going to have to specify a name for it. Let's just call it Test Emulator. And here you get to choose from a variety of templated devices which have been pre-created in the SDK for you. So each of these selections here will provide all the specifications that emulate an actual physical device, such as a Nexus S or a Nexus One. The good thing about this is you can you have templates here that reflect tablet layouts, so 10-inch tablets, 7-inch tablets. It gives you a lot of flexibility to test your applications without going out and buying a whole bunch of Android devices. So my favorite my favorite device to test on is the Nexus S. So I'll choose that. The target specifies the API level that's running on the device currently, so you can have a device that's running in Honeycomb or Jelly Bean, just so you can again test a variety of different API levels without having to have multiple phones. We'll choose Android 2.2 for now. These settings here are just mostly for aesthetics and usability. The hardware keyboard present, if you check this, you can use the hardware keyboard on your computer your, the keyboard that you would normally type with to interface with the emulator itself that makes it a lot easier when you're typing in text because otherwise you'd have to just click on the screen as if it was a touch screen and display a skin with the hardware controls it really just it's an aesthetic option it adds a little padding on the right with all the buttons for back and menu you can also specify if you want your webcam to be emulated as the front or back camera for the emulator and this here specifies memory options. It's recommended in many places to change this to 512 just so that your applications don't run into any memory issues and it's fairly standard across most phones nowadays. You can also modify the internal storage and size of the SD card. All in all there's a lot of options in this emulate, new emulator screen that allow you to configure quite a bit about your emulator but for our intents and purposes, we're really only concerned with the device and target. We really just want to make a device that simulates a phone and it's using Android Honeycomb, for example. So once you've chosen all the settings, go ahead and click OK. You'll see it pops up in here and we'll click Start. Here we can scale the display to real size. So this is the real physical size of the phone. We can also select some options to wipe user data. This would erase the phone and kind of reset it to factory, re factory settings before launching the device, which is useful if you want to completely start over and have a fresh install of your application, but we'll just click launch for now. The device will start and you'll see here it will begin to launch. It is quite slow and uh, the Android emulator is notorious for this, but we've now created our first Android emulator and we can test our apps on this emulator by launching to it later on once we're done developing our application in Eclipse. So in order to create a new Android project in Eclipse, we go to File, hover over New, then click Android Application Project. We then have to specify our application name. 
I'm gonna call this our first app. Project name gets generated for us and a default package name gets generated for us. Typically this package name would be the reverse of the website associated with the application just to make sure that the package name is unique across all other apps in the Google Play Store. But for now, since we don't have a website, let's just change this to app. We then have to specify the SDKs that are going to be used in conjunction with their application and since this is such a critical yet very complex part of Android development I'm actually going to dedicate a video to this entirely but for now let's change it to API 8 as the minimum required and API 19 as the target and compile with SDKs. We're going to change the theme to Hololight in this screen we can customize how we want Eclipse to make the application we want it to create a new activity, but we don't want it to create a custom launcher icon. We just want to use the default launcher icon for now. That launcher icon would be the icon that you click on when it's on the Android device to start the application. We're going to click Next. We do want to create a blank activity so we can go ahead and customize it ourselves. I'm going to change the activity name that it's going to be generated to main and the layout name that's going to be generated to main. There's no functionality reasons for this, it's just personal preference on my behalf. Once we click finish, Eclipse will go ahead and generate our project and it will also generate a few files for us in advance. You'll see that in the upper right here. Just to give a quick overview of the files that were generated for us, we have our source file which is going to contain all our Java files, all our activities. We have this generated file here, generated folder, which contains all the generated files that we really should never touch. This is how Android links the XML layouts and the Java code together. We have our Android libraries, the, which contains all the APIs we're going to be referencing. And assets folders, where we can store large raw video or audio. A binary folder, where our Android APK file is going to end up after we export the application. A libraries folder libraries folder here which currently contains the support library for Android v4 plus which allows their app to be more functional on more modern devices we also have a resource folder which is where all our where the majority of our resources lie this is going to be layout files that define how the screens look and as well as images and audio files you'll find that all in the resource file and finally, Eclipse generated three additional files for us down here, two of which are specific to how the Eclipse IDE works internally, but most importantly, it generated the Android Manifest file for us here. And I want to take some time to discuss what the Android Manifest file is, simply because it's very important in terms of understanding what your application does and how you can control some of the more meta functionality of your app. Now the Android Manifest is essentially a definition of your application, it's a summary of your application. It explains all the activities that are contained inside your application, all the permissions that it needs to use, that's why when you install applications you have to allow certain permissions, that's all contained in the, in the Android Manifest. You also use the Android Manifest to version your application, so if you want to release an update for your application, you would just modify that in the Android Manifest before releasing it. So it's quite an important file. And when you double click on the Android Manifest, you'll see that Eclipse gives us a nice GUI that we can use to navigate some of the properties and manipulate them as we need to. However, I prefer jumping straight into the raw XML to make my changes, so this is where I recommend it's that a prerequisite to understand how XML works would be kind of important because seeing this for the first time can be a little intimidating. However, this is really all the information contained in the Android Manifest. It has the version and package name of your application, specifies the SDK that's being used, and has the name of your application and all the activities that are used within your application. So it really covers everything about your application in one neat file. And I do want to leave it there for this lesson, however, to briefly summarize, here we went over how to create a new emulator, how to create a new project, and we dove in a little deeper to understand what this Android manifest really is. So I believe at this point we've really covered all our bases to start building our first application, and we're going to start doing that in our next lesson where we work on XML layouts to try and get the view of our application looking nice, so we can then hook it into the code in a following lesson.
But for now, I want to thank everyone for watching, and I'd also like some feedback on this series. If you think I'm going too slow, too quickly, if there's anything I could do better, that'd be excellent. Considering the series is just starting out, your feedback is extremely welcomed. And if you like this video, please go ahead and hit like, or feel free to subscribe to the channel for some more Android development content. And as always, have a wonderful day everyone, and I'll see you in the next lesson.